Dolphins fans, I just heard in the other studio Seahawks Today host Tyler Jones say, oh no, and I think that's because he realizes we're almost within 500 subscribers of his channel. Let's catch him by the start of the season. Go down, subscribe to Dolphins Today. I am Will Scott. Welcome in to Dolphins Today, and we have some news that's breaking. The Dolphins earlier today did not make any waiver claims. Unfortunately, I was really hoping for Alex Leatherwood or maybe another offensive lineman. That did not happen. Eight players have been signed to the practice squad. Was hoping to see the practice squad, at least the initial practice squad, finalized today. Unfortunately, we don't have that right now. However, half of the practice squad has been put into place. Let's break down these names. Braylon Sanders, a UDFA wide receiver out of Ole Miss. He was actually pretty close to making this roster. The Dolphins really like him. Luckily, he did not get claimed by another team. He's back with the Dolphins on the practice squad, as well as Larnell Coleman. Coleman lost out on the backup tackle job to Greg Little, but the 2021 seventh round pick will stay with the Finns, as well as Cameron Good. I really wanted Cameron Good to make this roster. I thought he deserved it. They went with Sam McGuavin instead, but Good on the practice squad. And this is the move I'm most excited about. Verone McKinley III is back with the Dolphins. I thought he might have been claimed. UDFA out of Oregon looked very good throughout training camp. He's back with the Finns, and he has a lot of upside, a lot of potential. That's great to see. Aaron Wilson reported this earlier. Miami Dolphins signing the fastest player in the NFL draft, former Panthers corner Kalen Barnes, per a league source, to their practice squad. So we can now welcome a new member to Miami. Kalen Barnes is a seventh, was, was a seventh round pick by the Panthers out of Baylor. Had the fastest 40 time amongst all players at the NFL Combine. This dude ran a freaking 4-2-3. That's how fast he is. And look, Miami needs some corner depth with Byron Jones out. So, I mean, if Jones isn't back, uh, you know, even after week four, then and a player gets hurt, maybe Barnes will be elevated to the active roster. So we'll see what happens. I like this pickup a lot. I think this is a really solid get. And look, the Dolphins are trying to be the fastest show on turf, right? They have all this speed on both sides of the football. You add more speed to this football team, bringing in Kalen Barnes. The Panthers let him go. Dolphins get him on their practice squad. Let's continue with the rest of the practice squad here. So you got Barnes, Porter Gustin, Zaquandre White. That's great to see. Know he's a fan favorite. A lot of Dolphins fans, excuse me, a lot of Dolphins fans going to be excited about that. River Craycraft as well on this uh, practice squad. I thought Craycraft was going to make the active roster after Lynn Bowden Jr. got cut. Uh, by the way, Bowden Jr. did not get claimed today. Uh, that was another surprise. So Lynn Bowden is still out there. Maybe we'll see him back on this practice squad. But for now, those are the eight names. Really happy they brought all of these guys back, especially Porter Gustin. Porter Gustin looked really good throughout the preseason. But because of the signing of Trey Flowers, he did not make the 53-man. But he's back with Miami on the practice squad. Who is your favorite practice squad signing so far? Go down in the comments section let me know. Very happy to see Good back, Veron McKinley back. We're not going to see Kellen Deesh back, though, which is pretty disappointing. Barry Jackson reported this earlier today. Arizona State rookie offensive tackle Kellen Deesh, who had over $100,000 guaranteed from the Dolphins and was a part of Miami's cuts yesterday, is joining the Bears practice squad Per source. Yeah, I, I'm really upset about this. I mean, the fact that Greg Little made this football team and not Kellen Deesh, I really don't understand. Kellen Deesh has a lot more potential, a lot more upside. You gave him a lot of guaranteed money. He was a projected fourth round pick. Somehow doesn't get drafted. It's an absolute steal. You get him as a UDFA, but you don't keep him on this football team. Maybe he wasn't too happy about that and decided to go to Chicago instead. However, there's a little bit of hope. Very little, because the Bears have not put out an official uh, claim, or official statement that they have signed him. So uh, they put out a bunch of names they signed to their practice squad. Kellen Deesh was not on that list of names. Barry Jackson, however, reporting 
that he is bound for Chicago. Benito Jones also headed north. He was waived by the Dolphins yesterday, claimed by the Lions today. So he's the only Miami Dolphin that was cut yesterday. That was part of the waiver claims we saw around the league today. I was not expecting Benito to be the one name that got picked up, but we're certainly happy for him. I thought he should have made the 53-man over John Jenkins, quite frankly, but uh, he didn't. Benito going to Detroit. He'll be reunited with former Dolphins coach Dan Campbell. Let's talk about the uh, Dolphins practice squad, what it could look like here in the next 24 or so hours because they have just basically filled half of it. They can put up to 16 players on the practice squad. That's the NFL rule. So eight players right now. I'd really like to see Ben Still on this practice squad. We're still waiting to hear where he's headed. I want to tell you about this great deal we're giving you with BetUS because if you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code DOLPHINS125, you can get a 125% deposit bonus. Again, chatsports.com slash bet. Dolphins are a three-point favorite against the Patriots in week one, and we're fast approaching that game. That is a great line. That's a lot of value. The Dolphins might be a four- or five-point favorite by kickoff because of how many people are going to be taking the Dolphins. So go take advantage of that line right now because it could change. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Dolphins125. Miami is going to destroy New England in week one. Go bet on the fins. Chatsports.com slash bet. Let's get into this next story. We have an update on Jalen Waddell. So he's missed some time with an undisclosed injury. We really didn't know what was going on. Here's what Adam Beasley of Pro Football Network is reporting. He tweeted this out earlier this afternoon. Jalen Waddell took another step forward in his injury recovery Wednesday and is on track to play early in the season. But there's reason to have a bit of concern for him going forward. Here's what he said in this article. The Dolphins have been tight-lipped about the exact nature of Waddle's injury. But contextual clues suggest, if we go to that, Trace, thank you, is dealing with a strain of some sort. The severity is unclear. Dolphins coach Mike McDaniel said Waddle conceivably could have practiced against the Philadelphia Eagles last week, but the team was holding him out of an abundance of caution. Assuming Waddle, who had an ankle-to-hip athletic sleeve on his right leg last week, but not on Wednesday, had no setbacks in the week since, he seems to be on track to be available for the Dolphins' Week 1 game against the New England Patriots. But if indeed he is dealing with a hamstring, quad, or calf injury, there's a not insignificant chance of him maybe not being back. So the concern for the Dolphins isn't whether they'll get Waddle back soon. They might already have. The question is how long they can keep him healthy going forward. That coming from Adam Beasley, kind of talking about Waddle's injury situation. Are you concerned about Waddle's injury? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comment section. Go down, chime in. Look, the bottom line is the Dolphins did the right thing not rushing him back. I mean, he wanted to play. He wanted to practice, but the Dolphins were like, yeah, we're not going to risk a setback happening. We're going to keep you out the rest of training camp, the rest of the preseason. Absolutely the right move. I'm not too concerned going forward. It doesn't, doesn't appear to be anything major. He's going to be playing against the Patriots next Sunday. I want to finish with this because Barry Jackson tweeted this out earlier. Dolphins announced creation of Jason Jenkins Children's Fund and Jason Jenkins Humanity Impact Fund in honor of their great executive who died Saturday. Owner Stephen Ross donating $1 million to fully cover his three children's educational needs and $1 million to advance his legacy and impact. Fantastic news. The Dolphins honoring Jason Jenkins, the executive that passed away over the weekend with those two funds. Go down in the comment section, type RIP JJ, because he meant so much, not only to the Dolphins organization, but also to the community in Miami. Go type RIP JJ to honor the late, great Jason Jenkins down in the comments.